people make NAD into Obsidian way too hard. You don't need cloud services, webhooks, or 12 plugins. There's a single local REST API that does it all. I'm running my self-hosted NAD through a Cloudflare reverse tunnel. This allows me to create workflows to automate node creation inside Obsidian. One community plugin, one node setup, one workflow, and you're done. I don't want to waste your time, so let's get into it. So we first need to install the Obsidian Local REST API inside of our Obsidian Vault. So to do that, we're gonna come down to the settings, go up to Community Plugins and select Browse. We're gonna type in Local REST, then select the Local REST API by Adam Coddington. So I'll just go ahead and install and enable the Community Plugin. Then left click the Options, and that's going to take me inside of that Community Plugin. We can see up the top that it gives us some instructions on how to access the Obsidian Local REST API. So the default setting is via the encrypted HTTPS API URL, and we can see the URL is listed here, but it's pointing to our local host machine. So that would require us to install a certificate on our local machine. Now, my traffic never leaves my machine unencrypted because I'm using a Cloudflare tunnel, which wraps everything in encryption before it goes over the internet. So I don't need to install the certificate on my machine, and I don't even need to use the encrypted API URL, what I need to do is I need to enable the non-encrypted URL here. So to do that, I'm just gonna scroll down, enable the non-encrypted server. And then when I scroll back up, we can see now that it is enabled. You can see that my API key is listed below. So I'm going to copy this to my notepad. So I'll just paste that into my notepad and we'll refer to that later on. So the next step is to scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're going to show advanced settings and then we'll scroll further down to our advanced settings. And what I recommend doing, and it's totally optional, is changing your encrypted and non-encrypted ports to a custom port. So for the encrypted port, I'm going to make this one 8445. And for the non-encrypted port, I'm going to change this to 8443. So now I'm gonna come out of my settings. And I'm going to check off what I've already done. So I've installed the local REST API. I've enabled the plugin and I've enabled insecure HTTP. So now I need to set up the ports, which I've already changed the port to 8443. So I want to check to see if this port is broadcasting in my Obsidian developer mode. So I hit Shift Control I and that brings up my Obsidian developer console. And we can see here that it's listening on 8445 and 8443 and we can see the protocol there. So we know that it's working there. The next step is to check the port is listening in Windows. So we need to launch a command prompt as administrator. And I'm gonna grab this netstat command here. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it into my command prompt. So that will reveal all the ports that are open on my device and listening. So we can see here that I've got my two ports for my Obsidian Local REST API. So I know that it's listening in Windows, so I can check that one off. So the next step is to head down and create a port proxy. The reason for this is that the Obsidian Local REST API binds to localhost, which means that my Cloudflare tunnel can't reach it from my network. So if you choose to use a Cloudflare tunnel, you'll need to create a quick port proxy to create a bridge on your network. So think of this like a receptionist taking a call on the number 8444 and then connecting you to 8443. That's what this command is going to do. So I'm going to copy this command. And I'm just going to clear my console by typing CLS and pasting that command in. Now, if you want to check to see if that's worked, you can type in net sh interface port proxy show all and hit enter. And we can see that now it's listening on my whole network for anything being broadcast to 8444. And then that's forwarding that traffic onto Obsidian, which is sitting at 8443. So I've created my port proxy now. So now I'm gonna create a Windows firewall rule. And this is going to allow the Obsidian HTTP proxy to allow the TCP protocol that local port 8444. So we'll just copy this command and I'm going to paste that in and hit enter. 
So now we can test our API locally. So we've got this curl command here. So all we need to do is put in our API from our Obsidian local REST API plugin and also the IP address of our Obsidian Vault computer. So to do that, go back to our command prompt and type in ipconfig slash all. And I'm going to grab my IP address here, which is 10.1.1.50. And I'm just going to come into editing mode, which is going to put in 10.1.50. Now I need to put my API key in there so you can come back into your local REST API community plugin, copy it from there or copy it from your notepad. We're going to paste that one in. So now I'll just take this whole kel command and we'll go into command prompt. We'll clear the terminal and we're going to paste that in and hit enter. And we can see that we've got a status OK connecting to our Obsidian local REST API. It tells us the version of Obsidian that we're running. and It's authenticated true because we've put our API key in the authorization header. So we know it's working locally. So now we need to test it remotely so that we can access it from our N8N self-hosted instance. So let's expand test remotely. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a Cloudflare tunnel on my domain name, Obsidian AI Tools. So I'll jump into my Cloudflare console and I'm going to come over to Networks, Tunnels, under Zero Trust. And I'm going to select Cloudflare here. And then it's going to ask me to name my tunnel. So I'm going to call this one N8 on to Obsidian. I'm going to save that tunnel. So now it's going to ask me for my environment. So I'm going to select Windows 64-bit. And I need to download this installer here. So I can either click on that link there, which is probably the safest thing to do. And then that's going to go download the Cloudflare Windows AMD 64 MSI installer. So I've already downloaded it. So I'm just going to hit install. And that's going to install the tunnel on my Obsidian Vault PC. So what I've found here is you need to close command prompt and then relaunch it again. And we'll do it as administrator. And then what we're going to do is take this command here. So we'll copy this one and paste it into our command prompt. So we can see that that has successfully installed and now we are connected to our tunnel. So we'll scroll down and we'll select next. And then we're going to create a subdomain. So I'm going to call this one vault demo. Then we're going to copy that subdomain. Now I've selected my domain name here, which is obsidianaitools.com. So I'm going to come back to Obsidian and I'm just going to update my subdomain here to Vault Demo. And then the next step is I need to point it to my Obsidian Vault PC, which is 10.1.1.50. And then we're targeting the port 8444, which is our proxy that we set up on our Obsidian machine. So we'll hit save to complete the setup and we can see that that has successfully saved. So now we'll go back to Obsidian and, and all we need to do is take our API key here and paste it down below here. And I'm going to take this curl command and come into command prompt and paste that in and hit enter. And now we can see that we are securely connecting to our Obsidian Vault from vaultdemo.obsidianaitools.com. So now we have a secure remote connection to our Obsidian Vault. So let's now jump into NADN and set up our nodes. Here we are inside of my NADN and I want to test that I can connect to my new Obsidian Local REST API. But before we do that, I want to jump back into Obsidian, go down to Settings, go up to Community Plugins and go down to the Local REST API. Left click that and you'll see there's a link to see our interactive docs. So we're just going to left click that as well. That's going to open up the Local REST API for Obsidian in light mode. I wish there was a dark mode but there isn't, unfortunately, so I apologize. We're just going to scroll down and we're going to have a look here to see what methods we can use within NADN to send HTTP requests to our Obsidian Vault. So we're going to test this top one here, which is a GET request to return the basic details about the server. You can expand this as well, which will reveal some more information. 
So we want to get a code 200, which is a success code. So let's go back into N8N, select add first new step, type in HTTP and select HTTP request. Then we're going to use the get method and we'll simply add the URL as the Cloudflare tunnel that we set up earlier, which is vaultdemo.obsidianaitools.com. We'll try without an authentication first by executing this step. And we can see we've got a response back from our Obsidian Vault, but it has come back with authentication false. So we're able to get a response from our Vault, but we're not able to do anything further because we haven't been authenticated. So let's go set up our authentication. So to do that, we're gonna choose a generic credential type, and then it's gonna ask us for which type, and we're going to select bearer auth. We'll then create a new credential. It's going to ask us the name and we're going to say new Obsidian REST API. And you can call this whatever you'd like. And then we need to add our API bearer token inside of here. So we're going to go back to our Obsidian Vault, come into our local REST API, grab our API key, and then paste that in as our bearer token and hit save. So now we have our credentials saved. So let's try execute now. And we can see that we are now authenticated as true. This is like us having the keys to walk into our vault and perform automated functions. So if we head back over to the documentation, we can see that we can manipulate active files. We can get commands, we can post commands. We can also do things with our periodic notes and we can also get our directory and we can interact with our files. So let's see if we can get some information about our vault. So you can see here we've got vault directories, get, and we need to just put forward slash vault with another forward slash. If we come back to N8N and put forward slash vault forward slash and hit execute, you can see that it returns the six folders that are contained within that Obsidian vault. If we want to see what's inside any of these folders, such as the note lab, and type zero zero percentage 20 for a space and then note lab with another forward slash and now i can see all the notes inside of that folder so we know how to get files from our obsidian vault from n8n what about creating files and putting them into our vault if we head back over to the documentation we can see that we can put files in our vault so we can create a new file in your vault or update the content of an existing one. So let's have a look at how that works in N8N. So we need to change our method from get to put, and then we're going to take out our folder path here, and I'm going to come back to the canvas here, and I'm just gonna get rid of the trigger node that's automatically created. I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to copy this node. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my Reddit AI analysis scrape workflow. And I recently made a video on this one. So you can see with this workflow, it'll get Reddit posts from Obsidian from the last seven days, send it over to Gemini, which will create a report and then prepare a markdown file. So I'm going to paste the new node that I just created. And I'm going to drag it over here in my little send to Obsidian. And this is the folder location that I'm going to send this markdown file to. So vault and n scrape reddit obsidian. So I'll connect this to my HTTP request. And then I'm going to open up my request. I'm going to rename it to send to obsidian. Now I'm going to execute the previous nodes and that's going to give me my data. So now that I have my data, I have to specify my paths. So I come up here and I'm going to put a forward slash and my path is up the top here. So it is for vault and I then scrape Reddit Obsidian. So I'm going to drag that in as my variable path and I'll just take out that space. Then I need to send the body. So I'm going to choose send body and I'm going to send the raw text forward slash plain content type. So now I need to specify the body. So I'm going to take my content here and put it in the body and that's it. So now I'll come back to my workflow and I'm going to hit save and we'll jump back into my Obsidian Vault. I'm just gonna expand the Vault folder. You can see that I've got no folder there called N8N. So I'm going to execute my workflow. So that's going to go execute my workflow and I'm gonna come into my Obsidian Vault and you can see I've now got a folder called N8N, Scrape, Reddit, Obsidian, and inside there, 
I've got my new automated note that I've sent over to my Obsidian local REST API. And this one is the Reddit analysis from the last seven days created by Google Gemini Flash. And it's just extracted five top posts about Obsidian. And I could go read about any of these. So this one here, Obsidian 1.9.9 early access. Obsidian 1.9.9 has just been released for Catalyst license members. And we can go read about that on Reddit. Now, if I wanted to delete that file automatically, I could use the delete request here, or I could update it with a new file with the put request again. So the local REST API for Obsidian opens up a lot of possibilities with N8N, especially if you're interested in automations. This could be something that may be useful for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.